Yeah, thanks. Brett Burry. Yeah. He's the founder of Tugaru Software, Infidelity, Playlist.com, and the Domain Licensing Corporation. Brett has 25 years experience as a lawyer, entrepreneur, and consultant in the areas of software development, internet law, internet marketing, web development, database publishing, database development, and domain name investing. That is a lot. Let's welcome Brett. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I was going to just get an idea of uh, how many people are already using WordPress and already know how to s install plugins. So it looks like maybe about 50%. So I'm going to, this is a beginner's uh, thing. So it may be lots of duplicative uh, things that you already know, but I'm just going to walk you through <coughs> some things uh, at the beginner level and then hopefully you'll learn something. But uh, I'm going to briefly walk you through the plugin installation process and the dashboard areas where you install, locate, and configure the plugins you have installed. We'll walk through my methodology for locating and evaluating avail available WordPress plugin options. Last, we'll spend uh, most of the session uh, discussing a list of useful and reliable plugins for enhancing your basic WordPress installation. So I just want to make sure that we knew what we were talking about here. Uh, so what I've done is uh, I love WordPress so much. We use it for our clients. We use it to uh, be the front end of database systems. We pump data in and out of it. So my WordPress presentation is actually done inside of WordPress. So there's no slides. So I just uh, this is my presentation vehicle. So uh, what I've got is it, we're on a website called blogsamples.com that I use to do presentations for people. And I'm just going to jump to what is a, a clean dashboard uh, in the system. So if you guys are familiar with this, I wanted to walk you through just the, the basic uh, admin dashboard where you would add plugins. And we're going to click through a bunch of buttons here, and I'm going to explain to you what's going on. So it may be duplicative, but uh, if you have already know it, but it might be educational if this is your first time through. So this is a basic clean installation of a WordPress just right out of the box. And, and we host a lot of our sites at WP Engine. So this may look different than if you host at uh, Flywheel or you host at HostGate or something like that. Your basic installation using their installer might be slightly different. But this is a, a base installation and it's called clean.blogsamples.com. So there's only one plugin that's installed, and this is a, a WordPress plugin for uh, uh, getting rid of spam in your comments. So I'm going to just uh, walk you through this, uh, you know, this particular thing. Does anybody know how to actually get to the dashboard on their on their system? So you're on the dashboard. After you log in, you would you would click here, uh, and we're just going to focus on this one uh, section of WordPress right now, the, the plugin section. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, you get a little bit of metrics here. You have active, must use, and, and drop in things. But we're going to say if we wanted to add a new plugin. So let's say it's a basic install, and somebody told you you really need to add such and such <coughs> to your uh, system uh, in order to enhance the functionality of WordPress. So you'd say, well, I'm going to go look for that plugin that somebody's told me about, or I'm just going to do some exploring as to uh, to what plugins. So the inside of your dashboard is a small search engine for uh, uh, finding and locating WordPress plugins. Uh, and I say small, but it, it's, it actually locates you know, tens of thousands of these things. So uh, these this are the featured. You can look for things that are popular. Uh, you can look for things that are recommended. And you can look for things that are favorites if you've marked anything under your WordPress ID. So if, uh, I, I do not use this, but theoretically, you can get a WordPress.org ID. You can use your username. You can type it in there, and you're on a brand new installation of WordPress. I could type in my username there, and get all my favorites would populate automatically. So if you're a developer or you have multiple businesses or websites, you can kind of tag, take a list of your favorite plugins along with you. So I just wanted to show you those particular uh, things. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to look for something. I'm going to type something in here, uh, and we'll just say, uh, uh, SEO. Okay, we're going to look for the best SEO plugins uh, that, that, that are there. We get a list of, of, of SEO plugins. Uh, what I wanted to show you was, uh, I guess the next part of our uh, thing is that um, I, I wanted to show you what I use to kind of like look through my methodology for finding some plugins and evaluating those. So let's jump back here to, uh, where are we at here? We'll just jump back here to our clean dashboard. And we're going to say add new. And we're going to jump to SEO. And we're going to look at this plugin. So 
there are literally tens of thousands of plugins, if not even more, for WordPress. And, and so sometimes you think you find what you're looking for, but it, it, uh, it looks like this will really solve my situation. But what you're trying to, to find is something that is maybe popular or reliable or has some sort of longevity with it, because there are things that seemingly from the description they will work but a lot of these things are made for free by people who are all over the world. And if you have a business and you're relying on something functioning on your website, you want to make sure it's not some guy that just got a new job and then they for, therefore they abandon their, their you know, philanthropy you know, creating this plugin. So you want something that is either paid or has a little bit of wherewithal. And so I'll show you some things that, uh, that you might be able to tell. Uh, uh, this one, this is Yoast. This is one of the most popular plugins at all, but I'm going to click on this button that says more details. Okay, so before I install this, I'm going to jump into this more details and you get a, a, a screen that pops up inside of your dashboard and it's going to tell you some information about this particular product. Sometimes these things do not load properly in, inside of here. It's not because we're in here, but what you can do is you can go to the official wordpress.org page and get kind of the same information. So I'm going to open that link in a new window and I get to find out what the official stats on this particular WordPress plugin. So I can say that this is updated three days ago, okay? That's very frequent updating. You might be able to find a plugin that hasn't been updated for years, and as a WordPress user, you see, well, I know WordPress has been updated multiple times in that time span. That's gonna look kind of unreliable to me to, to actually uh, either have a client's business or even my business on something that hasn't been updated in a, in a long, long time. Now, sometimes the plugins are so simple that it doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, there's the one I'm going to show you today I've been using for years. It says it hasn't been updated in years. It works fine, and I like it. And, and the, for my own sites, I'm willing to just, <laughs> if it breaks, uh, you know, I'll, I'll fix it at some point in time. But if you're paying somebody to fix it, you know, that's something different. So you can see when it's last updated, you can see how many act active installations there are. You can see what WordPress version what it's, it's tested up to. You can see what PHP version. And if you develop in different languages, you can see what, you know, where, where it's deployed around the world. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that. There, you can look at the reviews. Uh, uh, for, for the, the, at this point in time, you can look at the detailed reviews, but what a, it's like any other kind of shopping. If you're shopping on Amazon, you're shopping on something you want to kind of see whether they're reliable, it looks like there's some good reviews, and, uh, and get a bead of whether this is popular or not popular. This one is, you know, is hands down solid. I mean, this is one of the most popular plugins um, uh, for WordPress, but I just want to show you where to look at. And then I also like something is that you can click on this advanced view. I'll go back one screen so we'll see that. But if you click on the advanced view, you can see how many people are using what version of this particular software. So it's 7% uh, uh, here and 13.8 uh, and 9.9. .9. And so what this tells you is, is just, uh, I mean, you get all this stuff in your head after a while, is that you know, it looks like a lot of people are using uh, an older version of the software. Uh, on this one, I think it's just working fine, but other times you can find that, you know, nobody's really updated this software in a while. It looked like it was really popular years ago, and, and a huge portion of the user base is using an older version, and nobody's really adopted or, or updated. So you can tell something from this graph. But what I like to see is, is this little amplitude type thing here, is that when these people are, uh, are downloading the information, most of them, these are just huge spikes, but anytime an update. So I would go back historically and say, I look at this plug-in, and it looks like there aren't very many um, updates to it, or not many downloads, I should say. And at some point in time, there's a huge spike. Well, that means that they released a new version of their plugin, or there's a new version of WordPress, and people who are using it or relying on it went back. They downloaded it very shortly after the upgrade went up, and, and so it's kind of a little sign of health. So you can like look at this as almost like a heartbeat, like this thing is actively going, this is alive, and it's just not flatlining across the thing. So if you're looking for something to add, you look for a little bit of pulse uh, to it. And for seldom used things, these, these correspond with days of the week. Just tell, tell you about, you can find something out about human nature when people are working. Uh, that corresponds with like the seven days of, uh, of the week when people are doing their stuff. So it, I just find that kind of interesting too. Uh, and then you can also get some trend lines on active installs, whether this is becoming a more popular plugin or, or not becoming a more popular plugin. And that's, that's just, uh, just some more information to look at. Um, mostly, I mean, it's like, for me, it's like a yes or no. This looks healthy, this doesn't look healthy, and it looks like somebody's using it. You can have much smaller numbers, so don't, I'll, look at, I'll switch to another plugin to show you something that's maybe a more reasonable uh, amount. But you look at how many people have downloaded today and yesterday in seven days, and if you go to these, these reviews and you don't see any complaints, well, um, 
you can be pretty solid. It's like 122,000 people downloaded this particular thing, and I'm only seeing 504 bad reviews over the lifetime. So, I mean, that's, that's very reliable. If you see that, and I've got a few amount of, of, of uh, downloads, and I've got a significant percentage of complaints about it, that's something to stay away from. So that's a little bit of my methodology in, in, uh, in deciding whether I want to use something. And, and most of the time, you know, it's just this core set, but if you guys are, are hobbyists or just kind of enthusiasts or want to learn more, sometimes you have a little side site that you just want to play around with and just try things out and install it and install it and kind of learn. And this is kind of a, an interesting way to, to, to do that. So that's, I would say that is my methodology for, for taking a look. But let's look at some of these other ones that are down the line because that's maybe not an accurate uh, representation. We'll look at something. Okay, this one, SEO 10. Uh, let's just look at the more details of this one. And this may or may not load in here, but let's go to the plugins page. So this is a much less popular uh, plugin. It's last updated a week ago. It has only 4,000 active installations. I'm going to go to the advanced view, and this is the only this is the first version. I only have one five star review, um, and I can see you know what the, the trend line is for this thing. It's maybe going down. Today is 31. Yesterday, so uh, so you just kind of get an idea of of uh, what a a just a moderate or something you're going to play around with plugin might might do. This may work absolutely fine. I don't want to disparage disparage SEO by 10 web because it could be brand new and it's version uh, 1.011. And that's another thing you can look at. If something has healthy versions and it's been up there for years, they're probably updating it as well. So I just thought I'd show you those particular uh, things. Now you can find all this information in the uh, uh, in in uh, inside of that WordPress dashboard, or you can actually look at some other sites too. So WordPress.org has got its own uh, separate plugin search site. So if you go to WordPress.org and you click on the plugins button, you can type whatever topic you're, you're looking for for a plugin. So let's like to say something, we'll type in images and we'll see what kind of plugins they have that, uh, that relate to images. Uh, and so if you're looking for something, and it's kind of like, you can see what's popular, but if you know what you're looking for, uh, they, they sort them a little bit in popularity. So smush is, pops up first when I search for images. Smush uh, uh, reduces or compresses the size of images to speed up your website. So I just thought I'd, I'd show you. So if you want to get like, like more specific, like image manipulation or image categorizing or image alt tags, you can type things in there and, and maybe you know, call the set down uh, to something that's more, more reasonable. So that's another way that to find uh, plugins is you go to wordpress.org and you just search for those uh, plugins. Sometimes um, what I wanted to show you is that you are uh, you're just surfing around the internet, you see some sort of website that looks uh, interesting and you just want to uh, search it with like a browser extension. So let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this link right here. I gotta go to a different browser. This is a Chrome plugin here. Okay, so this is just a Chrome extension that I add to my to my browser. But if I'm on a, a, a site here, let's say I want to go to. Uh, 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 does anybody have a site in here that they they uh, uh, they want to tell me the URL? We'll type it in here, and we'll see what plugins you're running or whether you're running WordPress. Okay, so we're going to go to communityaction.org. It's going to load this up, hopefully. Um, so what I can do is I can click right here on this, this extension that I've in installed, and it's going to tell me, is WordPress running on this website? It's going to tell me what plugins this website is running that have to do with WordPress. So sometimes I'm surfing around the Internet, and I see, oh, this is a really cool site. I wonder if this is a WordPress site, or I wonder if it is uh, some other kind of, of website, you know, what kind of technology is behind it. So... There, there are search engines that will tell you what tech, like if it's Joomla or Drupal or WordPress, but this one is just a plug-in that gives you some information on this. So I can see that you're using this theme, uh, how many people are using that theme. <coughs> and I give the same kind of uh, talk to, to groups about theme selection, so this applies too, is that you're, when you're evaluating a theme. So I tell a little bit about uh, the website here, what theme you're using. So if I like the way it looks, like, hey, you know, maybe I need to go get uh, Vantage pre theme premium or Vantage Premium and, uh, and install that on one of my sites. 
So I see what plugins they're using on this particular or what website also. And, and so if I saw a functionality, so like maybe they've got a beautiful slider on this thing, maybe I should check out Metaslider and install it on my website or one of my clients' websites. So it's just a way to, to see, uh, do a little bit of exploring, a little bit of learning as to what's out there on other sites. So, so far we talked about you can find plugins with inside your dashboard. You can find plugins using the WordPress uh, sites, search engine functionality. And if you're just out in the wild surfing around on the internet, you can use uh, a variety of, of uh, plugins that work with different browsers. I happen to be using this one in Chrome, but they're the same browser or the same extension works in, in multiple browsers as well. Uh, so I just thought I'd tell you that. Some that's kind of. What's the name of that extension? That's WordPress um, Theme Detector. That's a WordPress Theme Detector right here. And it does work in other other things. And in fact, I've got a link to an article that's on this. Uh, uh, I'll leave this up for a while. Some of these links are internal to my admin panels, but if you go to blogsamples.com, you can follow along on all these links that I have in here. So if you go to blogsamples.com, you can see. Um, and then there's just another, I think I did a, uh, so we did that one. We did this first extension. I think this is a different extension that does kind of the same thing. This is WordPress theme detector. It just shows you, you can have it on different browsers as well. So those links are in there. Uh, then the next thing is you can just find articles all over the internet on, on this stuff. This is an article on, um, on these tools, a WordPress plugin checkers for 2019. And so sometimes they're, they're trying to sell you affiliate links. So they list all the plugins that are on there, but if they're a paid plugin, they aggregate the list and then you click on it. And if you buy it, they end up making some money. So that, that's probably why you find so many of these articles. Uh, but th that's, that link is up there as well. Uh, you can also search within a marketplace for different uh, plugins. So if, I don't know if you guys have ever used Theme, theme Forest uh, to, to buy themes. It's a huge marketplace for people who make software or make themes or make graphics or clip art. And a section of that particular website is devoted to WordPress and a section of that is devoted to paid themes. And so you can go through here and look for, or say paid themes, it's actually themes or plugins, but you can go here and also find you know, which ones are, are reviewed. Now these people, you can also, what I like about this is that sometimes I end up buying these things or using them, is that they keep really good records of the sales statistics. So you see some guy living in, in somewhere in the world and he's made, selling thousands and thousands of plugins at $25 each, he's not going anywhere. He's probably gonna be there for a long time and there's tons of feedback and tons of support. So you might be able to get a plug-in for free, but if you spend $25, this person might actually pick up the phone or send you an email and, and support that. So sometimes if you're looking for certain plugins, it's good to go to, to an actual marketplace uh, and they have you know good search functionality on you can read about this particular product. Um, you could buy it. Uh, you can see this guy, this theme punch is the person that put this together. Look at their po portfolio. They're an elite author. They've sold 406, 413,000 things at probably between 25 and $49 each. So, so they're doing pretty well. They're, they're not gonna be gone tomorrow unless they retire. Uh, it's, is my, you know, my interpretation when I see some numbers like that. So that's another place, that's Code Canyon. And then within Code Canyon, you just search for WordPress, either themes or plugins, and then you're, you're off to uh, uh, plugin shopping. Um, then there's some other uh, sites, just search within specific sites, which is a, a plugin check. So there's a, a WordPress plugin checker. I already preloaded this URL. So the website for this particular event uh, is, is uh, kansascity.wordcamp.org. It's gonna scan through here. It's, gonna, it's only searching for the most popular plugins, but it's gonna tell us that this is in fact a WordPress site, which I knew, and that they're running four plugins on their particular site. Okay, so, so you can just go to, if you wanna see, uh, you know URL of some site that you like and you wanna see what they're doing, instead of using that Chrome plugin, you could just type it in here and, uh, and, and check out and see what they're doing uh, on, uh, this way too. So that's one way to do it. I think I just had another site too. Oh, this is the site that we're on. Okay, so this is this, I plugged in the site for this presentation and these are the 10 plugins that we're gonna be looking at, but it only tells you the most, the most popular ones. So of the 10 plugins we're gonna look at or 12 that I have on the list, these are the ones that, that popped up when I ran that same search engine on, on our, our demo site, which is actually the presentation site. So I just thought I'd show you that. Um, then there's a different kind of way to, to find plugins. 
And uh, you have something, I, I just call this like a theme aggregator or a plugin aggregator. And it's very similar to the WordPress site that I could type in uh, SEO in here and I could find out what, uh, what, uh, what plugins are out there. And it just gives me a little bit of a different look. I don't know if this is any more valuable or less valuable than the other one, but sometimes uh, you know, they might offer some sort of feature uh, that uh, you know, analytics wise that, uh, that would be different than the normal WordPress uh, site. Uh, then we already kind of talked about free versus paid. If you, you normally get what you pay for and so if you're only spending a few dollars uh, it might help uh, to, to get something a little more reliable and sometimes there's a, a difference between uh, the, the features of a, a free plugin uh, for one we're going to talk about this uh, Google Maps plugin. I can do one map for free but if I want to do two maps I have to pay. Uh, so they kind of uh, you get you into uh, the door by giving you away one free thing, and it's a very valuable. I pay for the you know like a developer's license for for the software. So just the free versus paid. Sometimes that little bit of extra gets you some really good features. So don't be afraid to to spend a few dollars to to pay for your um, for your plugins. Um, I think we, there's there's also just some popular article lists. There's WP Beginner's list of plugins. There's HostGazer's list of plugins. And then there's the WP official site. I think we actually went to that one to, to look and see. You can just sort by what are the most popular plugins uh, for WordPress and they'll show you this is, the Yoast was number two, this contact form seven is five million and, and so on down the line. So anything you find on this popular is, is obviously millions of users, very reliable. And if it does what you want, then you should feel comfortable in, in, uh, in, in installing that on your system. Uh, so now, uh, do you guys have any questions about uh, any of the things we've talked about so far? No? Okay. So I've put a list together of, uh, of some plugins that, that I use and that are installed on, uh, on, on virtually every site that I work on. Um, Monster Insights used to be a part of Yoast uh, SEO and, and it just gives you a small analytics panel inside of your WordPress. So instead of you going to Google Analytics or instead of you going to any other kind of analytics like Lucky Orange or, or something, once I log in, I see this small panel of, of analytics just about what's going on in my site. Uh, it's kind of benign, but if you're not familiar with those other analytics tools, it just keeps kind of a, a pulse uh, going and see what, what's happening in your site. Now, how many people have business sites? Are you just like personal bloggers? Or what, what kind of, raise your hands if, you're, if you have a business or if this is, see it looks like a significant portion of you guys are a business site. So that, that's kind of a, just a, another way to see what's going on. And sometimes the Google Analytics gets overwhelming if you're running Google Analytics and you just want to see what's happening. And if you're your business owner, maybe it doesn't even matter what's happening on the site. What's happening? It's just happening on the cash register, and uh, and you're keeping a closer look on that than the actual activity on the website uh, for your online sales. But the next thing I want to talk about is a, is a plugin that we use on on uh, all, virtually all the sites that we have. It's called Gravity Forms. I know that Contact Manager 7 is, is the most popular one, but I actually like Gravity Forms, and it's a, a paid plugin. So we're just going to jump to this section here and show you, tell you what, about, what, what it does <coughs> is that um, any form that you put on your website, you can create in kind of a WYSIWYG fashion with Gravity Forms. Um, I don't know if you have like a contact page or any kind of forms on your website where you're gathering information from your users. You can make a pretty sophisticated form with no coding experience whatsoever using this product. And what I like about it is, is that I can set it up pretty easily to send me email alerts. So when somebody uh, interacts with my site and fills out the form, I'll get an email confirmation back. Uh, I, when somebody fills out something on the site, I can get a text message uh, that they filled out something, something on the site. Just with a, a small integrations, I can use Gravity Forms to say, let's say I had a restaurant review site and people were reviewing something or my own personal site they were giving my products reviews we could transport those into posts using gravity forms so they would actually put a you know write be writing a post it might be the subject and the message but in fact they're actually uh, w with a plug-in or a, an enhancement on gravity forms they're creating a custom post type inside of my system so it's really a uh, powerful uh, tool for, for uh, creating forms you can download that data and push it into something else. But the reason I, I really like it is, is that is anybody using any kind of APIs to connect to uh, MailChimp or Constant Contact or uh, um, uh, Campaign Monitor, those type of things? So inside of Gravity Forms, 
um, you can actually end up using a, a plugin to, um, to write to a MySQL table or a, a Google Sheet. Does anybody use Google Sheets uh, for, for their information? So uh, there's a company called Zapier, and I don't know if you guys, anybody in here using Zapier? Okay, got a couple of people. Um, it's, it's an amazing company. It's actually some guys, one of the founders is out of Columbia, Missouri. Uh, I haven't, can't remember his name, but years ago I ended up buying a WordPress theme on a Saturday afternoon and it wouldn't install. And this kid from Mizzou calls me and says, hey, yeah, I fixed something, you know, here, you can fix it. And it turns out it's this young man who is now this super uh, entrepreneur uh, who owns the owner of Zapier. And it was a, uh, a project at a, a, a startup weekend in Columbia. So that's, I just thought I'd tell you that little uh, anecdote about this guy. But what Zapier does, we'll open this up in a new window, is that um, it allows you to connect to a whole bunch of other services. So if you're using Twitter or Facebook or uh, MailChimp or Constant uh, Contact, so I'm going to say connect this app right here. This is just show you how Zapier works. Is I'm going to type in WordPress right here, WordPress, and it's going to say they have 90 Zaps is what they call them. So that I can take I can take my post from WordPress and I can post it to my Facebook. I can take my tweet from or something from WordPress and post it automatically. And all these things are further integrations. So the reason this is, that I'm saying this under this uh, umbrella of the plugins is that once you get a plugin out of Gravity Forms to write to a Google Sheet, you can take advantage of literally hundreds of these, a these a API connections. Once you get it to write to a MySQL table, you can take literally advantage of hundreds of other integrations. So even though Gravity Forms may seem like, oh, it's just uh, doing a few things, once you write to that Google Sheet or a Google Calendar or a Google Doc or something, there's a whole bunch of other things. It just opens up all the content that you're getting on your the, through your WordPress website to interact with all these other applications. And I think the key is, is that, that Gravity Forms makes it very easy to put those forms up there and that Zapier makes it uh, e very easy to connect the information in your, your WordPress database with all of these other applications. So if you, uh, it, it takes, um, you know, you just kind of like working through a little project. It's very low level programming. You just step through all the things and follow the steps. It's just amazingly easy way to do something that formerly we would have had somebody hand coding you uh, things for. As a developer, it makes me kind of sad, but as a business owner, it makes me happy that I could just test all these ideas in a matter of moments rather than to, to sit, you know, and spend weeks, uh, you know, crafting some custom application. You can see what, what's happening really quick. So. That's uh, Gravity Forms and uh, Zapier are the, the two things that you combine. I could just go through here. I mean, you can cl click through here and see, you know, all these uh, these different things that, you know, if you're using these applications. And then I think I had another link. Let me go back to the other one that, that has a different way to look at the, uh, uh, this is the download page for, for Gravity Forms. I think I'm logged in with one of my, uh, my, my account here. I thought I was. Let me log in. Okay, this is Gravity Forms, you down the, download this, but all of these things are add-ons uh, that you can, so if you see some piece of software that you work with in this particular list, that means that, that Gravity Forms has a special plugin that you would install as, a, as an adjunct to, to Gravity Forms being on your website, and that's a lot of, I mean, very popular software programs that you can interact with. I mean, assume lots of people are using Dropbox, if you're small business owners, you might be using FreshBooks, uh, Trello, the Twillo will connect you with your phone if you want to get an alert when somebody interacts with your website on, uh, on, your, on your phone. If they fill out a form, it's e easy to do. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you the, the, all of those things. So that, uh, it's just something um, else to, to uh, reason to use uh, the Gravity Forms. Let me go back here, back to our presentation here. Um, this Yoast uh, SEO, how many guys who use an SEO plugin on your website? So it looks like maybe 25% of you. I've been using this one for years. I, at some point in time I used other ones, but virtually every site that we install uh, has Yoast SEO on it. We use the, the, the uh, uh, you know, to, to set up our, our uh, analytics, we connect it with our analytics in Google uh, and, and just get a bunch of metrics. And now they have like these little uh, specializations like image optimization and video optimization and all these other things but it's almost like a little bit of educational piece because installing this thing and actually running through the uh, the directions for it teaches you a lot about SEO and, and tagging and where you need to modify things 
And though I can't show it to you here, uh, it, that's not, it's too much detailed into SEO, I suppose, for this presentation, but you can take a post and you can just see where everything's modifying. So they mock up what would be a Google search engine result and you're modifying your post and you're seeing what Google might pull from that post. I mean, Google has the, is the final arbiter, but you're typing the description and, and, uh, uh, and you're typing the meta tags and what might be highlighted for those search terms. And it's really educational for you kind of crafting content and seeing what it's going to look like when people see uh, you know, your, your website. And, and I'll just tell you is that you, know, you think how many visitors I have to my website. Well, the first look at people that get at your website is, is the, the snippet in Google. The vast more people are finding if you're through Google are viewing what your website looks like through that thing. So that's actually probably the, the main intro to your company's website unless everybody's finding you directly. If you have an existing brand that nobody goes to Google you, they just look at your business card. But if you have anything that's coming out on the search engines, your first look is what Google says you, that your website looks like. And so that functionality on each page or post inside of your uh, WordPress installation is a nice little preview feature inside of Yoast. Uh, they also will create an XML sitemap for you inside of the Yoast thing, but I, I used to and I still have it going is I can choose one or another. So if you're not using any kind of SEO plugin, but you still want to get indexed reliably by Google, this Google XML sitemaps plugin, uh, you can install that and they will create an XML sitemap and show you how to configure it. It's, a, it's one of the, the most popular uh, WordPress plugins, but that's one of the ones that uh, you know, I'll just show you briefly, click on this and, and walk through it. Um, it's one of those things that's got a, a huge amount of uh, downloads, two, pl two million plus, and we actually haven't walked through one of these to see what it looks like, but uh, there's installation instructions that people tell you. Uh, there's an FAQ uh, on this particular thing. There's a change log, so <coughs> if you see somebody who complained about something in the comments, like this does not work uh, in the reviews, you can jump back to the change log and kind of see, well, it looks like that may have been resolved. Sometimes these screenshots are helpful in evaluating what the plugin looks like, because, I mean, this one looks pretty good. It looks you know, reliable, though it may look a little bit complex, but sometimes you see the screenshots and it just looks like junk or it's uncompleted or it's, it's an unfinished product. So without installing, you can kind of get a preview here and then you can jump to the reviews um, uh, as well. So we didn't actually do that on any of the other detail pages. We were just looking more at the download analytics or the download stats. So I just thought I'd show you that. So that's the, the Google, the, the SEO and the Google sitemaps. Uh, there's a redirection plugin that I, I really like. How many of you guys do redirections on your websites or short URLs? I r really like this plugin. This is maybe my favorite uh, plugin for, for WordPress because I, uh, you, know, you, you want to change things, but the way it works is, let's say I'm going to go to this particular event and I've got this big long URL that's good for search engine purposes. It's uh, blogsamples.com, Brett Burry's presentation at the 2019 uh, WordCamp in Kansas City. Well, I, I don't want to put that on the business card or something. So what I can do is I can create that page inside my blog samples, but if I wanted to put that in a tweet or something, I could just say blogsamples.com uh, KC 2019. Okay, that's my short URL. So what this redirection plugin is that I take the, the, um, the short URL, the, the, the URL that, that, uh, that is the long one that I just read to you and I re redirect it to the, uh, the shorter, excuse me, I, I got that backwards, is that I take my short URL and I'm gonna redirect it to the longer one. So I would say I'd put a tweet out or I'd send you an email or something, check out blogsamples.com uh, 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 WC can 2019 and you'd click on that link and the redirection plugin would redirect you to the longer name of the post, which is a much better name for SEO purposes because it's got Kansas City and my name in it and, and WordCamp and all those things. So it's just a way to make some, some short URLs uh, that, uh, that to redirect things. And sometimes you might have had two blogs and they're turned into one or you did had a different site architecture. So you can also use it to kind of clean up things. So let's say that, that you have a, a legacy link that's uh, that's really popular and it's going to a page that no longer exists on your website or you have a product that's been discontinued but you're still getting a lot of traffic from people directing things to that particular product. Well, you can go in to this and you can say, well, this is the old URL that is no longer working because that product's been discontinued or, or whatever might happen, but we don't want to lose that. We don't want to make it look like it's a dead end. We're going to redirect you to the, the, a proper location. It could just be the main page of your website, but you're not losing that traffic. And then. Sometimes you may come from, let's say you're, you're coming to WordPress, you have an existing business and you were switching from Wix to 
whatever the uh, to your WordPress website, or you were using Drupal and now you're using WordPress. You might have a whole bunch of other links that are that are still out there because you've been operating under that older system for years, and you want to make sure they all go to where you would like those people to go inside your new stripe site structure. You can take all of the old URLs, drop them in there, and redirect them to the new places on the website that you want them to go. And I don't know if you've ever been a company that kind of, uh, you know, it may have hundreds of pages or thousands of pages, and they just uh, switch systems. Well, you're stuck out there with thousands of broken links unless you do something like this, uh, use this redirection plugin. So I thought I'd just tell you that. So it's a, it's a good thing to, uh, to, to put onto your website, whether for the short URLs or for just fixing uh, older, older problems that you might have. Uh, then another thing that I like is this NSP uh, sort uh, uh, plugin. So if I have a business, and, and since WordPress is a blogging platform, uh, most of the time it's thinking, you know, it's, it's kind of designed out of the box to say, my most recent post is the most important post. Well, in fact, your most recent post for a business owner is probably not your most recent post. Your most uh, important post is the post that converts the best on, uh, on, on selling something or that people are looking for. So what this thing allows you to do is, is to reorder the posts just by dragging and dropping. So the default situation is that if I have a page where I'm listing all of my, my blog content, it's just the, the, you know, the, the creation order is how it's working. So I'm going to jump to, actually, let's show you how this one works here. Uh, we go to page four, and we're going to go to these uh, posts. Well, actually, I want to show you what, the, what order we have things in right now. We're just going to go visit the <coughs> site. And so I've got this article that I've written called Presentation Outline, which is what we're following through right now. And we're going through this thing for the presentation. But I have an article in here called Plugin Locations, and I put some dummy articles called WordCamp Presentation Links, and I did a map and just some other stuff to show you how, what the order of those things are. So I'm gonna to go to my dashboard, and this is what this, this reorder thing does. So I go up here to posts, and I see this thing called reorder, okay? And so now the order that I just showed you visually on the front of my website was presentation outline, plugin locations, WordCamp presentation links, these other things. But what I can do is I can take this post right here and I can elevate it up to, that's pretty important. People are going to my post number three, and for some reason they're clicking and I'm converting sales with that particular thing. It could be the same thing for, um, uh, you know, your post might actually correspond to a product and you want to elevate something uh, to a certain, to a higher level. So I can do that and I can update this. And so now if I go back to my, visit my site, I'm going to have my presentation outline and then I'm going to have my post number three, which is the thing that, that I wanted to, to give more uh, prominence to. And sometimes what I find is that we have clients is they, they use a WordPress theme and they can't really tell how things are sorting. There's a Pinterest view and there's a list view and there's a category view and everything's kind of out of whack and they're really not in control of how to sort all those things without you know, monkeying around with something that they don't understand. So this particular thing will allow you to reorder the, the posts in whatever order you think is you know, most uh, relevant for business or readership or whatever. And then it also, there are different variations of this will allow you to reorder your tags and reorder your categories as well. So it's just kind of a way to take control over uh, the order things are displayed. And sometimes the default order may be fine, except you just want to uh, pull something else to the top for whatever temporal reason, you know, holidays or summer or Halloween or whatever product you're selling. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd just show you that particular NSP sort order. I, I use this a lot on, on my, uh, on my uh, websites. Another thing um, is that uh, I'm still using the classic editor in WordPress. I just haven't gotten the hang of the new one. Uh, in fact, I prefer the old one, even having tried the, the, the new one. Uh, but something that they took out a couple of uh, uh, versions ago is this advanced st image styles. Uh, and it, it makes it easy to, to uh, control the spacing around an image inside of your system. So I like this advanced image styles. And it's one of those ones where it hasn't been updated for a year. It's not compatible with the most recent version of WordPress, and, and seemingly, um, it, it's something that you should, you know, not be using if you know if you were going by my methodology. However, I have experience with it, and it seems to work uh, fine. And you get this warning: it hasn't been tested with the last major releases, but I, I still like it. So you know, uh, they're guidelines, I guess, not rules. So I'm going to show you one of these posts that we've got in here, uh, and show you how this works. Is that um, it's just kind of an oddball thing that I just kind of find handy. Uh, maybe it's on my pages. I can get it here. Okay, 
so I've got this, um, I'm going to insert an image in here. I'm going to add media. I'm just going to use this little thing right here. I'm going to insert this into the post, okay? Now, with the default thing, I have no control over the padding that's, that's, uh, that's surrounding this thing. I'll go like this. I'm not in control of the padding that's around that. But if I click on this edit button, I get my normal edit button, except this is extra. These, these, these advanced options down here have these image margins. And so I can say I get 20 and 20 and 20 and 20. And I can update my image. And I'll update it in here. I think I already did it. And it gives me more padding. It gave me those 20 pixels that I wanted versus just kind of going up against the edge. It seems like a small thing, but I find people that are writing a bunch of content, particularly like if you're just kind of a hobbyist writer and you're cranking out stuff and you've got some old images you've pulled off of Google and things, sometimes it looks like a complete mess because you haven't really copy fit those things or taught things to wrap. And so this little plugin with these extra boxes down here that tell you how to put the padding around it is just, is, is, you know, I, I like it. It's, it's, it's become very valuable. So just thought I'd show that to you. And it's also one of those examples that you can kind of find something that seemingly you should stay away from, and, uh, but, it, but it still works pretty well. So I just put an extra 10 pixels around that thing to, to show you how it works. So that's just a, uh, one of the other you know, uh, plugins that, that I was going to talk about. So let me jump back here to the main uh, page. Oops. Go back to our outline. So where are we at? We're at the uh, advanced image styles. Uh, how many of you guys use TinyMCE to, on your system? Um, this is a, a plugin that gives you kind of some WYSIWYG editing tools inside of your, your wor WordPress. And so it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's very popular. I mean, it's got 2 million plus uh, uh, downloads. I'm not sure what the trends are going to be because the, the new editing system might not uh, make this as necessary as it was. But I'll show you what this does is. When I go to my posts, we'll look at one of our, our posts here. We'll look at this post number four. Uh, I see this dialog box here that gives me these WYSIWYG editing tools. That I edit. So like I might have in Microsoft Word or something. And so I can uh, pick different fonts. I can pick two different paragraphs. I can give things an H2 tag. And for SEO, sometimes it's difficult to, like I've written this body of text. It's a thousand words. And I really want to tag something with an H1 and an H2 and an H3 for search engine purposes to, to tell Google what, what's important on this particular page. Well, this thing makes it easy because I see you know, my headings uh, in there. And a lot of times you buy themes uh, and it's kind of, uh, it's deciding what's important by, by virtue of the themes uh, structure on the posts rather than by what you want to do. So you can, you can, I can say this particular thing is important and I'm going to make this an H2 tag. Uh, I need to return that and, and select the whole thing. Uh, to put that on a, on a line, but that, that's something that, that you know, I, I like about this particular plugin. But you can also uh, configure this to, to put whatever tools that you want to. So I'm going to go to, um, uh, I forgot where this thing goes, in this um, tiny MCE. I'm going to leave the page. And so I can configure the, uh, the classic editor that I have for TinyMC. So I can say, you know, I do a lot of uh, horizontal rules inside of the way, the way I have my writing style, and I'm going to put that up here in that particular thing. So you can kind of craft your own custom uh, toolbars uh, inside of something. You can put page breaks or, you know, full screen or whatever you want to do in there. And, and so that's just a, a, another uh, reason that I like this. It lets me put in that bar what I want to put in that bar. And uh, I'll save those changes. And if we were to go back and edit something, that would be in there. So that was the next plugin, and that was the, uh, the Tiny MCE Advanced. And there's some other, uh, uh, that, that same Tiny MCE, you can have a plugin that will install that, the WYSIWYG inside of your Gravity form. So if I want to actually, inside of my forms, be able to, to have that dialog box pop up, or you can have it, uh, I want to be able to edit my widgets. When I go in and edit my widgets on my, on my page, I can also install some variation of that. will give me a WYSIWYG editor inside of my, my widgets uh, thing, thing as well. So let's scroll down here and see which ones we haven't gone through. I'm not going to talk about Jetpack because it seems like that Jetpack is 10 plugins uh, all in one, but that's a very popular plugin. Uh, you, should, you guys should probably take you know, a, a look at that, but there's tons of uh, information out there about that. Another thing that I like to install is that, particularly if, you're, if your businesses, I don't know if they're local businesses or not, if you're a travel 
uh, blogger or, or something, anything that relies on you geolocating something. I, I like this particular plugin. It's WP Google Maps. And there are one or two other ones that are just monster sellers or monster downloaders like this one. But I actually like this WP Google Maps. And I do some, uh, I guess my company does websites for uh, some apartment complex or companies that own apartment complexes. Uh, there's a professional golfer uh, we do things for. And then just virtually every business has a local map uh, in, in it. So you can uh, use this thing and, uh, and it lets you kind of make uh, the map that you want. You can pick between you know, how to display it, what tools will display inside of the Google. I think let's just open this thing. I think that may actually go onto the plugin page. I can't remember which one this went to. Oh, I just made a map of where we were today. So we're sitting right here. So very easily, after you get it installed, you can figure we're, we're at this particular uh, location. I could have set the default to blow up to you know the building that we're in. Uh, this is the actual address right here. Uh, I could click on satellite view. We could see where that pops up. So if you had a house that was for sale or a business or something you wanted to highlight, or you could make your own map, and let's just say uh, you're highlighting a festival, and you could actually put you know pins down on where the registration is and where, you know, whatever the carnival is, all those things. And furthermore, you can customize it with certain icons that'll show up, you know, they're kind of a generic, but you can put that level on there as well. And I can actually hide or remove all of these buttons uh, and kind of configure what gets displayed once I get there. So we'll go back to the dashboard. There's some other ones, so like the golf courses, it's really good for golf courses if you're, uh, if you're doing that, um, some of those. I mean, you want to see an aerial of a golf course if you're thinking about going there, see what it looks like. So we'll pop this open. So this is uh, a golf course that Tom Watson designed, and you wanna see what it looks like from the air because you might play that. It's just kind of a good way to present things. If you have a construction site, if you have a home that's for sale or a subdivision, you can really end up kind of tailoring your own map, and you can actually add information on top of those. So this is, you know, I could have put a paragraph about that particular, if I really was the owner of that golf course, I might have put something like this is a 300 par or whatever, or 300 yard par or whatever, and all those details on there, and you could just kind of interact with the map that way. There's another one that's, let me see what this other one is. Yeah. So, and this one, yeah, this one has, like, you have the custom, you know, there's a golf icon. There's a whole palette of, of icons that you can pull in there and, uh, and, and use. Uh, and then you can just jump back to the regular map as well and interact with it. So I just thought I'd show you those things. So that's a, a really valuable plug-in, anything having to do with geo. Uh, then I don't know how many of you guys have, uh, like you're, are into like lean marketing or, or, or lean uh, startup type tactics, uh, that those type of things for launching your business. There's a, a product called Seed Prod, and it's an amazing way to get a uh, WordPress website, which is not much more than a URL, up and running in just you know an hour, maybe even less if you get good at it. So it's called Seed Prod, and it's a it's a maintenance mode plugin, but it's it's way more than a maintenance mode plugin. So let's just say you've got an idea that you want to start something. I don't know, you're going to sell organic uh, uh, chickens or something, organic eggs, and you're not sure if anybody's interested in organic eggs. So you register organicegs.com. You want to put a site up. You really haven't got anything on it, but I want to look something that looks professional and I want to have a, a people subscribe to my email list and coming soon and give them a paragraph about that, get Google indexing it uh, because I want them to kind of, you know, get it in their records that it exists and I can put it on a business card and not be embarrassed by what it looks like. This is an amazing tool for, uh, for setting up a quick uh, website, Seed Prod. And so that's a plugin that I put on lots of websites, particularly if, if it's going to take, you know, months for a client to get some, all the content for the website together. Uh, we're not embarrassed during that particular time, and then sometimes years go by, and you're still not embarrassed because it actually looks okay, <laughs> the thing that you put together. So I've got a couple of uh, uh, just some demo things of, of what you can do with this, uh, this seed prod. And it comes with uh, uh, probably dozens and dozens of themes, and it comes with, um, uh, you know, you have like thousands of backgrounds that are, that are in the public domain that you can just automatically populate in here. So with just a few minutes, I have somebody who can describe you know, their, their idea, they can check the traffic on it, you can get the Google Analytics going and say, is anybody going here organically? Uh, is anybody subscribing to this list? Is anybody acting on what, uh, what, what, what we're saying here? And then I use it sometimes because we've just got like development URLs just sitting around. So you can just set something up that, that looks better than nothing uh, for this, you know, this database host, which is just something we do business under, or like web databases. So I, I just kind of like that for, uh, 
that quick website. And once you get in there, you can really do a lot. I mean, these don't do it uh, justice, but you can create you know, long forms. We've got a client that's actually been taking intake forms for a year, people registering for uh, certain services they're providing with no more than this setup, a, a stock background, and a big long gravity <coughs> form on it, and it's worked fine uh, for, for them. So it, it's not a full-blown website, but it, uh, it, it's pretty powerful. Uh, the next thing is WordFence. Uh, uh, do you guys host with like uh, WP Engine or uh, Flywheel? Those type of services have really good uh, security. I mean, they detect uh, immediately because they host so many websites of some sort of uh, suspicious activity or, or, or things. But if you don't, if you're hosting with some service that doesn't have like this macro level security going on, this WordFence is a really powerful plugin. And I don't know if you ever looked at your, your analytics or your logs, but once you launch a WordPress site, people are finding that URL and just trying to brute force into it just continually. I mean, it's shocking how many people are just trying to guess your password and, and brute force their way into websites. So WordFence uh, gives you a couple of tries. It'll lock you out of the website. Uh, you can lock out entire countries. If you're only doing business in the United States, then you want to exclude where, where hackers' IPs might be coming from outside the United States. You can exclude those countries. So it's really a good uh, product to install uh, either if, if we're hosting with Fly, uh, WP Engine, we don't install it, but if, or if somebody else is using a hosting service, this is almost an immediate install because it, you, you, you know, you'll get hacked before you even lock things down if, if you've registered a URL and they're just pulling through all the URLs or IP addresses looking for a WordPress install. So that's, I guess that's my plugins uh, uh, presentation. Does anybody have any questions? I don't know, are we done after 50 minutes or are we done yeah, with questions? Okay, so I didn't know if it was 50 minutes long or if we, anybody have questions? I uh, have a question that may not be a plug-in question, okay. but could you just go to one of your blog posts, like number six? Sure. I just, I, I am uh, new to uh, WordPress, and uh, when I was talking with somebody about um, an issue I was having, is that visual and text, those two things, is that part of the WordPress program, or is that actually something that you downloaded into the site? Well, no, this is, uh, that's part of the, the default um, WordPress program. So this one, I mean, this is maybe a bad example because I, I should pick a different post because this one only has one thing on it, and it's that call for that map out of that WP map. So let me go to all posts real quick here. And that's fine. The person I talked to, they had not heard of that, so they were probably haven't worked on yeah, so what it is is that this is my, my visual, okay? So I'm going to bold this. I'm going to make that bold, and I'm going to make this thing uh, under or italic. And so we'll look at those things. So visually, this is like I'm working in uh, like Microsoft Word, you know, just bolding underlying things. But if I go to text, it's going to show me the underlying uh, structure that the HTML that I've created. And so now I've got a, a strong, the strong tags uh, around that, that particular word that I bolded, and I've got the EMs behind the, the, bold, the thing that I made italic. So if you toggle back and forth between those things, um, you can you know, solve some problems. And, and sometimes, you know, visually you can't see them, but if you go to the text, I can see, oh, that's where that extra space is or where I'm missing a bracket or something. But that's what that is. Any other question? Yeah, over there. You know, um, we, you know, we host it someplace that's safe because over the years we've had, you know, people like, you know, you give a client uses like, you know, demo one, two, three is their password and the next thing you know, they, they've been <laughs> hacked into because they want something they could remember. So we kind of, we forced uh, difficult passwords on everyone. If you want to access the things, you have difficult passwords. But some of the things you can do, which is pretty kind of low level is, is because there's multiple ways to detect that it's a WordPress website, but probably is that you know people go the name, the name of your domain name forward slash wp hyphen admin close if i hit, get a hit on that i'll see your login page i mean i've determined it's wordpress so you could there are plugins that have you hide that in a different place so your actual admin is in not in fact uh located at that particular place i i know there are plugins that do that but i think anybody sophisticated enough to actually bust in is going to start looking at your code and clearly see that it's a WordPress website by something you know less obvious. Uh, I just don't know. You know that that's a, a minor thing uh, by hiding it. I think you know the better thing is to do is to get difficult passwords, hide it behind WordFence, hide it in a secure uh, a place, to, and, and and go with that, and make lots of backups because sometimes you have to go way back in time 
because they'll, they'll hack in, they'll inject something into your MySQL and you don't know about it until a much later point in time. Uh, and then sometimes it's actually just a, the poor man's way of finding out if you've been hacked is just do a Google search site colon the name of your URL uh, and see what pops up. I mean, I've had clients who had for years, you know, not knowing that uh, somebody's hacked into their site and posted a bunch of other uh, like uh, BitTorrent type links to download things and buy things behind the scenes. They don't even know they're on their system. And you, they wouldn't have really shown up unless you had actually gone in and done that Google search. So it's site colon the name of the URL and see whatever has gotten indexed. So hopefully that might have helped you. Do you have somebody else? You had your hands up? Yeah. Um, for the redirection, we use that really like regularly for all of our websites. Uh -huh. um, it reminds me of something I learned about with vanity URLs. But my question is, is if you were to make a short link, is that just pertaining to your domain? Can you just make it any? Because I would think that if it's just anything, someone else might own that. Well, you know, the short link is it's your domain name. So well, what I, I do sometimes is that I've got. Uh, I own a company called Domain Licensing Corporation. Okay, well, I own dnhold.com also. So dnhold is short for that. So if I, I don't do this with that company, but I, you know, it's a big, long URL. I just wanted to make sure I had you know, the, the name. But for dnhold, I can point them both to the website. So if I type in Domain Licensing Corporation forward slash calendar, and I type in dnhold, type in forward slash calendar, they both go to the same website and resolve. But if I wanted to, to send you something and say, hey, this is a reminder of our meeting or what my availability is, I'd send you the DN hold, and then, then that would be my shorter, you know, kind of vanity URL, and it would somehow redirect inside my website to wherever I wanted it to. So that's normally how I do it now. Sometimes I just use the domain name and just make something shorter because I want that long search engine friendly, you know, blog title for Google purposes, but I don't want to be passing out business cards that you know, have sentences on them uh, in, in the form of a URL, so I didn't want somebody to retype. So that's when I, I like it. And sometimes I just set up a site for people that's like one, two, three, four, five through 10, and they just know that when I pass out my business cards, so name my business forward slash one, that that goes to whatever page I've ranked as my sales page or my you know about company or something like that, and, and it makes it easy to type. So, so. is this good for people who need your domain slash anything after that? Yeah. And you can redirect outside of your site, too. So let's say you have an affiliate link. I want you to go to, to you know, blogsamples.com. I have a page there called blogsamples.com affiliate, and, and maybe you're going to buy one of these themes, and it would point you, it would redirect you out, but I'd get credit for that because the URL I send you away with has my affiliate link in it. So it's like, hey, go visit my site for this information, but I send you to some place where I'm going to get some money if you buy something. Okay. Any further questions? We don't have to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. So you need to Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.